Good morning students. Today we are going to be studying alkanes. Amongst alkanes or within the topic, we are going to be studying its physical properties. We are going to be understanding them. We are going to be moving on to their reactions and their consequent chemical properties and other assorted concepts that come up with the chapter. With me I have Gopi who is going to be teaching us the bulk of the chapter. So Gopi over to you. Yeah. Among alkanes, first we'll start with physical properties. Now in the physical properties, first you have to note that Alkanes are non-polar compounds and they are covalent. Now, among alkanes, only weak intermolecular forces of attraction exist between them. As a result of it, they have lower melting and boiling point than the other class of organic compounds. Now, if you take the boiling point, it increases as the number of carbon atoms increases. Now, if you take isomers, lesser is the branching, more is the boiling point. So, this appears interesting, right? Like why could uh, branching lead to or lesser amount of branching lead to greater amount of boiling point as such so let's try and understand what is the boiling point dependent upon uh, a boiling point will be dependent upon the amount of heat that needs to be provided to be able to break the intermolecular forces of attraction between the particular molecules right now the first is it's going to depend directly on the atomic mass but now when the atomic mass is same what is the second factor that comes into play and the second factor is surface area so what happens is when there is greater branching the surface area of the molecule decreases thereby the amount of attractive intermolecular force also decreases because it's directly dependent upon the surface area so if we have more branching we have a more compact molecule as opposed to straight chains and there is lesser surface area and there's lesser attraction as a result of it you need to provide lesser heat and if you need to provide lesser heat to be able to evaporate it or sorry to be able to boil it what happens is that the boiling point decreases so uh does melting point follow such a trend gopi uh melting point doesn't follow such a trend okay so what what But how do we measure the melting point is such a is there a general parameter melting point also uh, is because of the intermolecular forces between them okay but as the molecular mass increases the melting point also increases but it also depends upon the compactness of the structure okay if you take uh, even number of carb uh, alkanes then they are arranged more compactly than the other alkanes okay so um, you mean to tell me that um, as we can see on the screen pentane and propane both pentane even though it has a higher molecular mass than butane has a lower melting point and propane obviously has a lesser melting point right yeah and but pentane will have a greater boil uh, melting point than propane yeah okay all right so uh, we know in general i guess this is a bit of a rule of thumb to be able to understand it nobody is really going to ask you to remember them exactly but just understand this general rule of thumb okay so are we going to look we are not really looking at any more physical properties right yeah so let's just move on to the preparation of alkanes as such The first thing we'll be studying is called catalytic hydrogenation. So, Gopi, tell us more about it. Yeah. First, in the catalytic hydrogenation, we start up with an alkane or an alkyne. Now, when these are made to react with hydrogen in the presence of metals like nickel, palladium, or platinum, we get alkane. For example, you can see here the in the double bond of an alkene, one bond is broken and H are attached to it. Then we get an alkene. Alkane. and for alkyne two bonds are broken and hydrogens are attached to it and we get an alkene now we going to discuss it more detail in the examples now don't worry about the mechanism of it and all okay so we'll come to the mechanism later so the next one is reduction of alkyl halides yeah in the reduction of alkyl halides first we start up with an alkyl halide and we treat it with any reducing agent like azide in zinc in acetic acid or copper then we will get an alkene yeah i'll tell the mechanism in the later on okay similarly let's move on to decarboxylation of carboxylic acids now in the decarboxylation we start with a carboxylic acid and we treat it with a soda lime now the soda lime is naoh in presence of cao when we heat it it loses co2 and we get an alkene Okay so this is just the basics of alkanes that we yeah. need to know right let's understand a couple of more reactions regarding alkanes as such 
First, one of the interesting reactions in the preparation of alkanes is Wurtz reaction. Now, in this Wurtz reaction, we'll start with two alkyl halides, and when this is treated with sodium in presence of ether, upon this heating, it will give a mixture of products like R R R dash R dash R R dash. If we take R X and R dash X. as okay. alkyl halide uh will the three compounds that come out rr r dash r dash and rr yeah, all dash. the three all no, the no. three no no so all the three compounds will they be equal in percentage or uh, like 33 33 33 or will rr and r dash and r dash be more in presence than rr dash or is, yeah. is there anything as such that depends on the r which we have taken whether it is primary or secondary or tertiary now i will de- discuss the details in the problem in right? the problem as yeah. such all right So, hold on, students. You don't need to worry. We're going to be discussing all of this in problems. The next is coal base electrolysis. Now, in the coal base electrolysis, we'll start with the potassium salt of uh, carboxylic acid. Now, when this is electrolyzed, you will get an alkene. Now, remember, here we get only symmetrical alkene. Okay, so we can't have an R C O K and R dash C O K mixture, which will give us all of this, right? That will not happen. Even if you take R C O K and R dash C O K, you may get R and R dash or R dash R dash or R and R. Okay. Now, if we want symmetrical alkanes, we'll take only one. Okay. So this reaction is actually used when you want to get a symmetrical alkane out as a yeah. result, right? Okay. That's where we use coal base electrolysis. While Wood's reaction will give us a mixture. Let's look at the next one, which is the Cori House synthesis. Now, this involves a series of reactions. First, uh, then you'll take an alkyl halide, treat it with lithium. Then you'll get lithium alkyl halide. Then whenever you treat it with CuX, you'll get R two CuX. X is a halide. Any halide, right? any halide like F C L B R I. Okay. Now, whenever you treat it with an, another alkyl halide, a substitution takes place, and you'll get R R dash and a mixture of products. Okay, so at the end of it, uh, the R L I is regenerated. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So uh you can use it again. All right. Now uh the next one is reduction of carbonyl compounds. It's called the Clemenson reduction, right? Uh, Or you, you have types two, of it. Uh in this reduction of carbonyl compounds, you have two reactions. One is Clemenson reduction and the other is Wolf-Kirchner reaction. In the Clemenson reduction, you treat an carbonyl compound with Zn in the presence of HCl, then you will get alkene and in Wolf Kirchner reaction you treat with NH2 NH3 in presence of OH- then you will get alkene remember in the clemenson redu- reaction you you are using an acidic medium and in wolf kirchner you are using a basic medium so the mechanism which these two reactions follows will obviously differ okay so we need to keep this in mind that one is an acidic medium the second is in a basic medium yeah and a small note for you guys that uh, to ensure that you guys don't worry these reactions will be discussed in detail with the solved examples that are to follow this is just a quick theory recap for all of you now let's look at some chemical properties of alkanes the first one we're going to talk about is halogenation and this is one of the most important reactions regarding alkanes as such so over to you gopi now in the al- in the halogenation reaction an alkene is treated with a halogen like chlorine fluorine bromine or iodine in the presence of sunlight or heat then you'll get an alkyl halide and an acid hx okay the next one is going to be nitration uh, in the nitration reaction an alkene is treated with concentrated nitric acid solution and it's heated to a high temperature then you will get nitro alkene okay so heating it is very important yeah okay uh, sulfonation the sulfonation is pretty same as the nitration reaction only thing is that you will treat it with concentrated h2so4 acid then you will get alkene sulfonic acid and you heat this as well yeah Okay and the last is oxidation. In oxidation there are there are various reactions like uh, uh you you heat an al- alkene in the presence of oxygen at high temperature then all the bonds of it breaks and you'll get CO2 and H2O. Now this is complete oxidation. Now in the presence of This is of basically burning a compound as we call yeah. it right. We get CO2 and water. Okay. Yeah. Now there is also a reaction called partial oxidation. Now in the presence of less oxygen or even in the presence of uh, oxidizing agents like KMnO4 it will be partially oxidized like here i have exam- exemplified it like methane is treated with oxygen in the presence of copper you will get chcoh that is methanol okay 
and in the next reaction i have told you 2 methyl propane when treated with KMnO4 you will get uh, an alcohol product okay uh, so these are just different ways to bring yeah. about partial oxidation as such uh, is it possible for us uh, other than just to get uh, an alcohol to be able to say potentially get say um uh, aldehyde or uh, carboxylic acid yeah, or is that another reaction we can get it but the thing is we need to supply very high temperature so that bonds between the carbon atoms breaks up okay because we need to put in a double bond for yeah. oxygen essence all right so maybe we will look at that we we'll look at that in a little while so let's move on to the next bit we are now going to be starting the last part of our theory section of alkanes where we are going to be dealing with two particular examples uh, of equations which are isomerization and aromatization uh, you should remember that both of these are equ- uh, reactions that you should just remember because the mechanism for them is fairly complicated and it's just best to remember them as it is so with isomerization let's get started yeah in the isomerization reaction first we'll take an alkane and treat it with AlCl3 in the presence of HCl then you'll get isomers of it for example here i have taken hexane and now when this is treated with these reagents you will get 1 methyl pentane and 2 methyl pentane okay and with aromatization and in the aromatization reaction here i have exemplified a hexane when treated with cr2o3 or molybdenum oxide or vanadium pentoxide at very high pressure and high temperature it will aromatize to a benzene ring so you should remember students when you see any kind of a reaction where you're going to have cr2o3 m2o3 and vanadium pentoxide as the catalyst it's most probably going to be an aromatization reaction so they can give you one of these two of these or all of these together as such right yeah okay so with this we end the theory section let's move on to the problems in alkanes now Okay so we're going to start off with the first question this is an easy one it's directly based on some of the concepts that we've covered so what you've got to do is you've got to arrange the following compounds in the increasing order of their boiling points right yeah okay so let's get started in the question i've given you three compounds namely a b c one is n hexane and one is 2 methyl pentane and one is 2,2 dimethyl propane now i have asked you to find the boiling point of these compounds first in the physical properties i have told you that as the number of carbon atoms increases boiling point increases so we get a is greater than b and c now if you see b and c are isomers so i have told you one more thing that among isomers as the branching increases the boiling point increases if you observe c is more branched than b as a result of it c has more compact structure owing to less boiling point so boiling point of b is greater than c so from these two we will get a greater than b greater than c so this is the boiling point order of these three given compounds okay so easy question let's move on to the next one So after the very easy first question let's come to the second one which has asked you to predict the most favorable product upon the monochlorination of isobutane in the presence of sunlight so gopi what's the first thing we need to know to be able to solve this to solve this question first you must know the structure of isobutane now the structure of isobutane is ch3 ch ch3 and ch3 okay. now in the question you have asked to find out when this is treated with cl2 in the presence of sunlight what will you get okay and this will be only one equivalent right because uh, big, it's most favorable product uh, yeah okay so you are supplying less amount of chlorine okay otherwise we'll get a lot of different kinds of products right yes. okay okay then as a rule of thumb i'll tell you one thing health will give you free radical intermediate where h stands for heat E stands for electricity L stands for sunlight or light right? or yes. light because it would otherwise been hesp yeah <laughs> and P stands for a peroxide any peroxide like H uh, C O O C H okay then H you can take it all right yeah. now 
first thing is in the presence of sunlight cl will dissociate cl free radical and cl free radical you will get okay and next you have got cl free radical and this alkene okay so i am not writing the hydrogens so okay. what happens here is this cl can abstract this hydrogen or even this hydrogen okay now the question is which one will be the most favorable one all right just see if it takes this hydrogen this one you will get this free radical and but if it takes this hydrogen you will get this free radical so you see this free radical is stabilized by one hyper conjugation whereas this free radical is stabilized by nine hyper conjugations as a result of it this is more stable and this hydrogen would be abstracted okay so what will be the final product that we get as a result of this and what happens here is when you got this free radical it will again attack on this you will get 2 chloro 2 methyl propane so the chlorine free radical that initially comes up yeah. will extract one hydrogen atom yeah and then the free radical that is formed yeah. will attack another chlorine molecule yeah and take a free radical out of it on its own yeah all right so i guess you understood the process very clearly now this is the reaction called free radical uh, chlorination of alkanes i've told you that in chemical properties of alkanes exactly uh, and we also told you that this was a very important reaction yeah. that one should always remember so just to recap it the first thing you're supposed to be able to do is draw the structure of isobutene the moment that has been done what you do is you create a free radical out of that particular alkane and see which one of these is going to be more stable and once you figured out which one is more stable you're going to have that free radical attack a chlorine molecule and form the final monochlorinated product uh, fairly easy right